Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night is another in a series of picture books about where various creatures sleep. It's a great book for bedtime or any time. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book, and I'll talk with one of the authors about the inspiration behind it. Stephen J. Simmons and Clifford R. Simmons are the co-authors of Where Do Big Creatures Sleep at Night? And Cliff joins us to talk about this second book they've written together in this creature series. This one is Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night? Cliff, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thanks so much, and thank you for having me. This is another in a series of creature books, so tell us a bit about that series. That's right. Well, I, I co-authored this book uh, and the last one with my father, Steve, and this is the, the third book in the series. So uh, these books are intended to be a fun and educational bedtime story for young kids. And the name of the first book in the series was Where Do Creatures Sleep at Night? The second, the second book in the series uh, was Where Do Big Creatures Sleep at Night? So as you might imagine, the animals that, that we discuss uh, only get only get bigger in that one. And then the, this book, of course, is Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night? With a particular focus on, on creatures that live in the ocean. And the idea is that the book focuses on you know, the, the mystical nighttime sleeping habits of, of all kinds of animals. So that's the educational piece. And it was even educational for my dad and I. We learned a lot of interesting things in the process um, that we hadn't previously known through all of our research. And it was really fulfilling to be able to to impart, you know, some of those interesting facts and, and knowledge on on kids throughout throughout the country. So, so what inspired you to look underwater for this latest edition of this creature series? It's a great question. I mean, first off, I think my dad and I are both and always have been passionate about the ocean and about the water, both in our personal lives and spending time in the ocean and our fascination with snorkeling and scuba diving. So I think there, there was a bit of personal passion there, um, you know, coupled with the fact that uh, we knew it would be a great third iteration in this series, right? And, you know, after doing Where Do Big Creatures Sleep at Night, we knew that uh, venturing into ocean animals would be a whole other interesting category that would be really, uh, we felt, interesting uh, and educational, not just for the kids that that I read this book to them, but uh, but also the parents as well. Um, I'm hoping I'm learning in this process. Well, I can vouch for that as I read the book because I didn't know that. <laughs> so I learned new things along the way. If you have a copy of the book, Candy, would you read a small portion of it for us to give us a, a flavor of what people are going to find here? You got it. You got one right here. A stingray glides through the water with wings and a long tail it can use to sting. When asleep, a stingray burrows in sand, with its body flat like a large fan. There it lies hidden, except for its eyes, to keep watch while it stays in disguise. An octopus can change the color of its skin, to hide from others as it blends in. It has many arms, eight to be exact, and if it loses an arm, a new one grows back. The octopus can sleep by day or night. It rests in a hole to stay out of sight. And when safely sleeping with nothing to fear, it may still change colors. The reason's not clear. A walrus has tusks that are long and white. If it had to brush them, that would be quite a sight. It uses its tusks to climb on the ice and to push away others if they're not acting nice. A walrus can go for days without rest, but then it must sleep to be at its best. It snoozes on land most of the time, but can rest while it's floating. Either is fine. So I hope that gives you a brief taste of it, albeit with only three of the animals. There are lots more. This book has been endorsed by the only one organization which is involved with you know, saving the oceans. Tell us a little bit about that and, and why that was important for you to get that endorsement. Yeah, it meant a lot to us, right? Because I think it's it's uh, really a stamp of, first of all, support for the story that we're trying to tell and um, and the interest and, and support of, of these types of animals that live in the ocean. And then secondly, it really felt 
uh, and serves to us as a stamp of validation in terms of the research that we've done um, on, on the interesting facts about all of these animals um, and the accuracy of, of that, of that research, of course. Um, so it really meant a lot to us and we appreciate uh, the support. I'm talking with Cliff Simmons about where do ocean creatures sleep at night? And our conversation will continue. If you're enjoying this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. And thank you. Well, this book is a great introduction to sea creatures and creatures in the ocean. But what other advice would you have for parents to help kids have an appreciation for life under the sea? I would say, you know, first and foremost, experiencing it. You know, I, I felt fortunate growing up to have the opportunity to spend time in the ocean, um, at least as much as we were able to, and that I think really sparked uh, a passion in me from a young age of uh, spending time in the ocean and learning, you know, as much as I could about the animals and the creatures that live in the ocean. So I think first off, there's you know nothing better than than firsthand experience and spending time in the water. Um, and then secondly, from there, uh, I think I think reading about it and being exposed to interesting information and powerful information uh, about the ocean, you know, whether it's this kind of book, where do ocean creatures sleep at night, um, uh, when when kids are at a, at a young age, and and as they progress, you know, continuing to read, um, uh, you know, read about the ocean and then be exposed to interesting information. So those are the two things that I would that I would say. And what I did want to mention um, before I risk you know, forgetting about it is that anyone anyone listening or watching can learn more about our books and, and of course, uh, purchase this book, Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night, on our website, which is simmonsbooks.com. So again, that's simmonsbooks.com. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, you can, you can do the same on our Instagram, which is at Simmons Stories. I want to ask you a little bit about the creative process here, because you're working with your dad, and I'm wondering, you know, kind of what that collaborative process is like for the two of you. Yeah, it was a really rewarding process. You know, I've always looked up to him because he had, had succeeded with writing children's books, you know, throughout the 90s, whether it's Alice and Greta um, or a number of other books that he read. So it felt really rewarding to have the chance to collaborate with him formally on this series of books. So that's the first thing I'll say is I really appreciated the opportunity to do it. Uh, and it allowed us to really work together in a professional capacity for the first time uh, and not, not strictly a father son capacity. So I think we learned very quickly how one another tend to work and how we can complement one, one another's work styles. Um, and, and we figured out pretty quickly how to be the most productive with one another um, even in this father-son duo. So it was a really special experience and uh, I'm excited to hopefully write another one with them in the next book in this series. Now, putting together a children's book, some people might think, oh, it's, you know, it's a picture book. It's got to be simple. Anyone can do it. But it's, it's much more complicated than I think people realize. Well, first of all, you've got two authors here. You have an illustrator and you have restraints. There's a certain number of pages, a certain number of words you can get on those pages. So it becomes a challenge. Tell us a little bit about you know, sort of what you've learned along the way now that you've uh, worked on a couple of these picture books and, and, and the kind of challenge they represent. So uh, a couple of things. I, I, what you said is, is very spot on about the, the constraints. So, you know, we, we do so much research across so many animals to start the process. And one of the hardest things, believe it or not, is just, just narrowing down to which out of all these animals are we going to land on um, and, and, and narrow it down to. And then la and then secondly, for the actual content that we write about the animals, how do we make that concise and brief enough um, that it's going to fit in the confines of what we need for this book? to your exact point. So, you know, what comes to mind for me is there's, there's a famous quote by Mark Twain. I think it goes something like this. I would have written a shorter letter, but I didn't have enough time. And it basically hammers home the point that brevity is actually the more challenging thing often um, and, and requires narrowing down and, and, and being more concise. Um, whereas, you know, oftentimes you start out with a lot more volume and a lot more words than you have to 
figure out how to narrow it down. And that, rem- that, that reminds me a lot of this process. So we had a lot of animals and then a lot of content about each. Narrowing it down was, was a challenge, but, but an, uh, an exciting challenge. And it forces you to focus on just the most important words and the most important concepts. So I enjoyed that process. Um, secondly, like I said, just, just choosing which animals that, that we want to go with and why was, was, is an important part of the process. And then, and then collaborating on the artistic uh, illustration process with our incredible illustrator um, was also a really fun part of the process too. And, and making sure that we're aligned on having illustrations that, that are going to line up effectively with the, with the words that we're saying and vice versa. And I appreciate the fact that you kept that adult audience in mind as well, because with a picture book, it's an adult that's going to be reading this book to a child. And if the adult doesn't like the book, they're not going to want to read it over and over and over again. Agreed. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that. Yes, yeah, so we did. You know, at its heart, it is designed for, for children to enjoy, but it is important what you said, that, that it's important for adults to enjoy it as well. Well, as you mentioned, this makes a, a great bedtime book. And in fact, at the end of the book, you even make a point of telling the kids, all these creatures need to sleep, and so do you. <laughs> so why was it important to include that message? I think we really wanted, you know, like I said, to, to emphasize the educational importance um, of this book. And, and at the end, we, we intentionally made an effort to give, you know, direct advice um, about the importance of sleep to children. So the entire book is, is fun and educational about the animals itself, but it meant a lot to us to wrap it up with, the, with a direct message to the readers um, about applying, you know, the same concept to your own life and the importance of sleep for kids. The book is Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night? by Stephen J. Simmons and Clifford R. Simmons. Cliff, thank you for talking with me today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. If you'd like to purchase Where Do Ocean Creatures Sleep at Night, I've placed a link for you in the description below. If you've enjoyed this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. Meanwhile, here are two more interviews you might find interesting. Well, thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.